This is exciting. Uh, so which camera again? How's my hair? Don't forget to get my good side. Hey, can somebody hold my coffee? I look good. All right, let's do this. I'm Zane Holtz. Carson Reed. Sophia Juarez. Jane Wilson. Gabrielle Mason. Lindsay Arzonico. Joey Taylor. Jalen Dunman. I'm Mr. Starcher. This is PNN. Good morning, Pace Eagles. I'm Sophia Juarez. And I'm Carson Reed. Welcome back to another episode of PNN. Students and staff, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and the Pace Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We at Pace pledge to treat everyone with fairness, kindness, and respect. I went to a lot of theme parks over spring break. I saw a lot of older rides and here's attraction graveyard with Connor. Followed by Extinction. Welcome back to the Attraction Graveyard by Connor McBride. Today we'll be taking a look into the future in Horizons. Its location was Epcot's Future World East, in between World of Motion and Wonders of Life. Part of the ride was that guests were taking a trip into the future. The ride starts out by looking at the future through the past, as how the past perceived the future. From the works of Jules Verne all the way up to the 1950s. After this, the vehicles would show the future in different, first showing an apartment in Nova City. They would next see Mesa Verde, a desert robot farming operation. Afterwards, the vehicles would travel underwater to the Sea Castle, a marine settlement. After that, the vehicles would travel up to space to the space station Brava Centauri. Finally, guests can choose which destination they would like to live in. Afterwards, the guests would exit the rock. The ride was a hit with guests, but despite its large fan base, the ride would close in 1994. To the surprise of some, the ride would reopen in 95. This was because World of Motion was closed to renovate into Test Track, and Universe of Energy was being renovated into Transform to Elven's Energy Adventure. And opening up Horizons would keep the crowd flowing in the area. But once Test Track opened, Horizons would close permanently in 1999 and demolished to be replaced for mission space. So why did it close? The first was the removal of GE as the pavilion sponsor. The second reason was because they didn't need it anymore and there were reports of a sinkhole forming in the southeast corner of the building, weakening its structure. Now I have a flight to catch to meet two old time animators and talk about their old attraction. Hello Pace Eagles and welcome back to another episode of Extinction with Colin Higgerson. I've got a really good one for you today. The Great Auk. The Great Auk was a species of bird that was once common in the waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. It was about 30 to 33 inches tall in height and weighed to about 11 pounds. Its wings were only 6 inches long which made the species of bird flightless. Whenever the great auk wasn't breeding, it would swim in the ocean and hunt for food such as fish. The great auk bred on rocky islands where the male would get together with its female and nest. They laid one egg at a time on bare rocks. After the egg is laid, the incubation would last up to about six weeks before hatching. The babies left the nest after two to three weeks, even though the parents still cared for it. After their breeding season was done, they would head back to the ocean until the next breeding season. The great auk lived for about at least 10,000 years until the sailors and fishermen came along in the 19th century. They hunted and killed the great ox, both adult and young, for food, and their feathers were used for pillows and mattresses. 
The last confirmed sighting of the Great Auk was on July 3rd, 1844. On that day, there were only two Great Auks left, a male and a female. They were killed by fishermen on Edley Island in Iceland. After that, the Great Auk was officially declared extinct. Facts The Great Auk was very agile in water but very clumsy on land. Why? Because their legs and feet were located far back on their body, so it was hard for them to walk in an upright posture. As I mentioned earlier, the Great Auk would swim whenever it was not breeding. It was very good at swimmer. They dove underwater and swam really fast when hunting for food. It can also hold its breath for 15 minutes. Unfortunately, we cannot bring back the Great Auk, but there is a bird called the Razorbill that is its closest relative and it's still around. You can find it in pretty much the same place the Great Auk has been. That's all for today, Pay Seagulls. Next up, here's History of Presidents with Joey. Hello, my name is Joey Taylor, and here's my new segment, History of Presidents. This week's episode is about Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was president from 1933 to 1945. He was born in 1882 in New York, and he died in 1945 in Georgia. He is best known for being the only president to serve more than two terms, and that became outlawed as a result of his presidency. He was only allowed to be president for this long because the country loved him for helping the country through the Great Depression and during World War II. See you later, Peace Eagles. Bye. Finally, the White Doves, quote of the day. And, and birthdays! Happiness is the way. Have a terrific Tuesday. Bye. Bye.